Today's daf, Bezus Hashem, is daf Samach Tes. Uh, we're going to be starting from Samach Tes Omid Beis, about eight lines from the bottom. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, uh, let's just discuss this, and then just very easy. Once you, this is the daf that you really need to just to, to see the uh, psukim on your screen. The, pos, the Gemara said before that if um, a ger amoini you know, we, we, we're talking about over here that a Bas Kohen, let's say a Bas Kohen, a daughter of a Kohen, a Truma all her life. You can be banned from eating Truma, just like you could be banned from coming into Israel if you snuck in, in during COVID. You can be banned for life from eating Truma. How do you do that? So you have a daughter of a Kohen, she ate Truma all her life, and then she has an illegal relation with an Amoini, Mayavi, Mitzri, Adoimi, all these people, she had an illegal marriage. Let's say she married a mamzer. Okay, let's give it one thing. She married a mamzer. Now, technically, the marriage works. It's not like the marriage doesn't work. It's not like marrying your brother where there's no marriage there. In Menat Torah, according to, the way, uh, according to most Tanoim, the marriage does work. And nevertheless, psalon. She is invalid, banned from eating truma her in her life. Look at this Pasuk. This is the Pasuk that we're discussing. Uvas Kohen, the daughter of a Kohen, Kisia Le Ishzar, she marries Ishzar, uh, a, a strange man. A strange man means that somebody she's not supposed to get married to, like a Mamzer or a, or a, a Mitzri, an Egyptian. So he betrumas ha Kadashim She's disqualified it from eating Truma anymore. This is the Pasik, okay? So this is the Pasik. This is the Pasik that describes. That uh, if she gets married, to, uh, if a Baskoin marries somebody who is apostle to her, she's disqualified from eating kachim. So the, this only discusses if the Bas, the daughter of the Koyin had relations, had a, had a marriage with somebody she's not supposed to have. So now, this is where we're up to. We're starting from Daf Samach Chesam at Beis, eight lines from the bottom. The Ema. So the Gemara is saying, the Ema, let us say, Nivala Laposola, the Nivala Laposola, Chayef Krisis. How do you know that Pasik is talking about when she married somebody uh, like a Mamzer? Maybe that Pasik is talking about that she just had relations with a Chayove Krisis, which is somebody that she cannot have a marriage with, like her brother. And that disqualifies her from eating Truma for the rest of her life. How do you know? that the Pasuk is talking about that she actually is talking about a lighter form of illegal relations, like she marrying a Mamzer or Nassan or a or Mitzri. How do you know that also disqualifies her from eating Truma for the rest of her life? Answers the Gemara, because look at the Pasuk. Kisia Omer Achmara. The Torah says the daughter of the coin, Kisia, the word Sia means she got married to somebody, to an Ishzar. Hanach is Havaya, those that she could get married to can disqualify her from eating truma for the rest of her life. Chayavi Krisis, but marrying somebody who's also to you on Krisis, let's say the Bas Kohen, you know, sleeping with her brother, La Bene Havaya, that is not called somebody who she could have a, a marriage with. And that's why that Posik is not talking about that. So the Gemara asks, okay. Maybe so. Then, if she, why don't you say like this? If so, let us say the next step that if she had relations with her brother, if the Bascoin slept with her brother, she doesn't get disqualified from eating truma because the Torah only disqualifies you if you marry, if you were capable of marrying somebody, but you're never capable of marrying your brother. And the Gemara gives another example: If a Bascoin uh, had a relations. With with a slave or an, a, a goyish uh, slave, a goyish uh, a, a regular gentile or a slave, loy she should not be disqualified for eating truma. So Yisrael says, yes, you're right. From that pasuk, you wouldn't see it, but you have another pasuk. Hanach pasli mishum the Rabbi Shmuel. They they they're disqualified they, from from the pasuk that Rabbi Shmuel brought. I'm Rabbi Yochanan mishum Rabbi Yisrael. Rabbi Yochanan said, in the name of Rabbi Shmuel, Menayin how do I know? Legoy the Eved, a slave, a guy, Gentile, Shabo al Bas Yisrael, that uh, slept with a with a with a Jewish lady, or Bala Kehenes, 
or he slept with a Kohanis, uh, Bas Kohen, Olivia, Shepislua, that these girls forever can never eat Truma in their, in their life. Abbas Yisrael, after sleeping with a Goy, if she marries a Kohen, she can, she's disqualified from eating Truma. How, does the, uh, how do you know that? Shunema, because the Pasuk says, Ubas Koyen Kisi Almana Grusha. Let's look at this Pasuk. It's a very important Pasuk. This is the next Pasuk after the Pasuk we discussed before. The Pasuk says, Ubas Koyen, a daughter of a Koyen, Kisiya, if she gets married, and presumably she gets married to a Yisrael, let's call him a, a Jew. So once she gets married to Yisrael, she, she doesn't eat Truma anymore because now she's married to a Yisrael. And then she got Almana Grusha. She became a, a widow or divorced from that Yisrael, from her husband. And she has no children or grandchildren. That's very important. So then she's a Baskoyen. Vishovel base Avia. She can go back to her father's house. Kinerel, like she was a young girl, and eat the truma from her father's house. Melechem Avia Teichel. She could eat from the bread of her father. So here the Pasik says. That if she can, when can she go back and eat truma if kisiya? If she had a relations with somebody that she could get married to, but if she had a relation with somebody she can never get married to, then she's disqualified from eating truma. What what is that referring to? If she had relations with a goy, or she had relations with a chayove krisis, which no marriage can can be effectuated by then, then she can never go back and eat truma. And that's how we know. That if she had relations with a guy, she can't eat truma. We're on top of Savak Tes Omeral. Me, she actually Almanus Vigerishim Ba, Yatsu, Goy Vevich, Ain Loy Almanus Vigerishim. That the Pasik says only if she had relations with somebody that she could, she had, she could become widowed or divorced, means she could get married to that person. Then she could return home after that marriage. If it didn't work out, she could go back to eating truma. But this, but if she had relations with a guy and an Evet, that means she ain't like or Sugar. She can never have, have a, a marriage with them. There's no such thing of being a widow or divorced from them. So therefore, she's disqualified from Truma. So the Gemara says, Ashkechan, the Posix describes Koyhenes. A Koyhenes, if she had relations with a Goy, she can't eat Truma. But what happens? Levia of Israelis, Menolan. Let's say there were, that this girl was a Levi or, or Israelis. What does that mean? This, this, let's say, Jewish girl, right? She's not a, come for, comes from a family of Kohanim. Or she was a lady. Why was she eating truma? Because she married a Kohen and she had a child from that Kohen. And we know when, when this lady has a child, a Kohen, right? Or she has any children from her husband, even if her husband, the Kohen, dies, she can continue to eat truma. So, in the, and the Pasuk says, and then what the Gemara is asking is, how would I know that if this widowed lady who's eating truma and she's a Yisraelis has a relations with a goy, not she becomes disqualified from eating truma? How do you know that? The pasuk only says ubas koyin, the daughter of a koyin. So the Gemara says, The answer is bas ubas. Hachanami bas ubas. The Rabbah said in another area that you can darshan a vav. There's an extra vav in that pasuk. You see over here, u bas koyim teaches you not only a bas koyim, but any levia or Yisraelis that was eating truma on account of her son. That means her husband died, and she's uh, her husband the koyim died. She was eating truma on account of her son. If she has relations with somebody she's not supposed to have, she gets disqualified from the extra vav. So the Gemara says. Are you going to say that our Gemara, that our drasha is only according to Rabbi Kiva, who, who makes you know special drushas from the extra vav? Because we learn elsewhere that Chachamim don't you know take the vav so seriously as Rabbi Akiva. So the Gemara says no, that 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 can go afilu tema afilu tema rabbana. You can say. That that goes according to Rabbanan. Kulu ubas kra yisera. The whole ubas koyen is extra because the Torah wrote before ubas koyen kisiel ishzar. That's the pasuk previously. So why does it repeat the word ubas koyen? That teaches you that it's not only about a bas koyen, but even a bas a levi a Yisraelis could also get disqualified from eating truma. So the Gemara asks one more question on this matter. The Ema, why don't they say? 
Mi yesh le, the, the opposite. Mi shi yesh le almanus begerishim va. When that the pasuk is saying that when when you have almanus begerishim, if she had relations with a normal Yisrael, then ki less le zara if she has no children from me, from that child from that marriage. Let's say she married a Yisrael, a regular baskoy in the matter of Yisrael, and she got divorced or, or widowed. If she has no children. Then she goes back to Achla. She goes back and eats from the family. Is Zara, but she does have a child. So it means she has a child from that marriage. La Achla, she would not eat. And that's what the Pasuk is saying. But me almanus but if she had relation with somebody like a like a goy that she has no uh widowed or divorced, because they were never married, Afagab the Is Zara, even if she has a child. Nami techel, just the opposite. That if even if she has a child, she could eat because maybe the pasuk is saying that only if you are married to a Yisrael, and then we determine if you have a child or you don't have a child, whether you could go back home and eat your, the family truma. But if you if you were just had relations with a guy, maybe even if you had a child with that guy, you could still always go back. Maybe that's what the chumash is telling you. So the Gemara says that it's impossible to say that. In came Rebuya Levi of Israelis Lomeli. Why does the Torah try to include uh, Israelis or Levi? Because if you tell me this leniency by a Kehenis that has with a Goy that she can eat Truma, right? That she can always eat Truma, but she doesn't get disqualified. And a Kehenis doesn't get disqualified, who's naturally born to eat Truma. Certainly, a Leviya Yisraelis who's only brought on to eat truma by the fact that she has a son, certainly that person doesn't get disqualified. So why do I need that reboy, that extra word to teach me that Leviya Yisraelis? So it must be that, no, it's the opposite effect, that really a Bas Koyen that had relations with a Goy is disqualified from eating truma. And therefore, I would think that only a Kohenis is disqualified from eating truma if she has relations with the guy. That's why you need an extra riboy, an extra to tell you that not only that, even if she's a labia in Yisraelis and was eating truma, she's also disqualified if she has relations with a guy. Now, so again, where we're holding at this pasik, this pasik number 12 teaches you that if a Bas Kohen or any lady that had an illegal marriage, What's an illegal marriage? That the marriage worked. Let's say she married a mamzer. The marriage worked. She's disqualified from eating truma. And this Pasuk 13 tells you that even if she had a marriage uh, that will never work, she's disqualified. For example, she had relations with a goy. She, once she had relations with a goy, she's disqualified. But according to Rabbi Akiva, the Gemara's question is, all illegal marriages don't work. Rabbi Akiva is of the opinion that if you have any relations like a Koyan marrying a Grusha, a divorcee, there's no such a thing of a marriage. The Torah says it's illegal. It doesn't even take effect. So that's the Gemara's question. So then only you need is one Pasuk. That's the Gemara's question. Rabbi Kiva, the Alma, ain't Kedushin, Tavsim, Mechayav, Elavin. According to Rabbi Kiva, that Kedushin, even if the Torah says just uh, a lice, I say, that don't get married to this person. It doesn't tell you that if you do, you get Kores or Mises Bezden. As soon as the Torah says, don't get married to that person, that's it. The marriage doesn't take an effect. So what do you learn from the Pasuk that if you do get married, it doesn't mean you did Bas Cohen that got married to illegally. It means Kisiya means she had beer with that person. She had relations. That's what it means. So then Almana Grusha Lomeli. So what do I need the Pasuk of Almana and Grusha? What do I need the Pasuk of Almana and Grusha? Pasuk number two. Answers the Gemara. Look what this Pasuk is teaching you. Let's take a look. The Pasuk is teaching you that a Bas Kohen that married a Yisrael, right? She married a Jew, regular Jew. Of course, once she married a Yisrael, she, she's not, you know, she can't eat truma anymore. And then she became an Almona or a Grusha, and she has no children. Then we allow her to go back home as a lonely woman and start eating truma once again. But why did the Torah tell you Almana and Grusha? It is a Chiddush to teach you an Almana. Because I would have thought that Almana, Almana, that even if she does have children, we're going to think an Almana, even if an Almana has children, she could go back and eat Truma. Because an Almana really could always marry a coin again. So she's not totally lost. 
And a grusha, I would think that even if she, if she, I would think that if she doesn't have children, she doesn't eat truma. So that's what the Gemara is going to say. The itzricha. If I would just say an almana, I would have thought almana, if the Pasuk only said the word almana, almana who the less lozera achla. Almana, if she has no children, then she goes back home. Mishum the because she inherently could potentially marry another Kayan again. So then she goes back home and eats the truma, what she ate when she was younger. Ava Garusha, a bas Kayan that get divorced. Once she gets divorced, she can never marry a Kohen anymore. I might think, Ema, I would have thought, even if she has no children, she wouldn't go home and eat truma again anymore. Because once you become a grusha, you're tainted for life. Kamash Malam, that even if she became a grusha, as long as she has no children from that marriage, she can go back home and eat. Be Yashmin and grusha, but if it would just say about a grusha, that the whole story is about a grusha having children she can eat and no children. If, and if she has children, she can't eat and no children she could eat. I would say like this, grusha b'chi islo zera lo'yachla. When she's a grusha and has a child, then she can't eat truma. Why? Because she's, because she, 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 she's tainted for life. She can't marry a coin. Aval almona, I would have thought, the Chazia Lekehuna, Almona potentially can marry a Koyin. Ema, I would have thought, Afagab the Isla Zera, I would have thought that even if Almona has a child, Nami Techul, she could also eat. Sricha, that's why I need this Pasuk again. So according to Rabbi Akiva, according to Rabbi Akiva, this whole Pasuk is, this whole Pasuk is not to teach you about where Kedushin's not Chal, you, she, she's banned for truma for life. That I know from the part, previous pasuk. Abbas Koyen, as soon as she has illegal marriage, uh, illegal relations, marital relations, she is disqualified for eating truma anymore. This pasuk is teaching you Chiddush by Almana and Grusha that no matter what, it depends. If the if the Abbas Koyen married Yisrael and she became either Almana or Grusha, the law is if she has no children, she can go back home and eat truma, but if she has a child from that marriage, then she can, can't go back and eat truma. Now, the Gemara asks two more questions, and then we go into the new point. Be'ema, let us say, that as soon as she marries or she has bia with somebody who she's not supposed to, she's disqualified. But would you say that includes af machazir grushasai, that even if a machazir grushasai, Let's say like this, you have a guy who divorced a woman and then she went ahead and married somebody else and then she got divorced from that person and this guy took her back, right? This guy took her back and then that person, and then that person died. Now, so she was a machse grushasha. She did an illegal marriage by going back to the person that she got divorced from. Would you say that person who did that, this lady that did that, is disqualified from eating truma for the rest of her life, but that we know that's not true. A, machs, a lady that was over the Avera of going back to her first husband is not disqualified from eating truma. How do you know that? So the Gemara says, The Torah said that only time you come to disqualified from truma for the rest of your life, only if you have a relation with somebody who's a strange man to you. Like you had relations with a mamzer, or you had relations with your brother, then you're disqualified. But if you're just a machzeh grushasa, if you just had relations with your former husband, so even though you did a big avera, because you're not supposed to, but uh, if you did it, you don't become disqualified for your life, because that's not called somebody who's strange from you from the very beginning. So the Gemara asks, "E hachi if the Yisrael chalal the lavzar loy if the if the chalal a, a, a kohen that lost his kedusha, right? A kohen that was let's say the, the 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 result, the child of a wrong union. Let's say a kohen married a grusha. Their child is a chalal. He's a he's a a kohen that has no kedusha to him. And according to that case." If he has relations with a chalal, this lady has relations with a chalal, she shouldn't become puzzled because the lav zaru, this is not somebody that was asa to her because a chalal could marry 
any any bas coin. There's not an iser for a cholot to marry a daughter of a coin. It's just this cholot doesn't have a kedusha coin. And why did we say that if a cholot does have relation with that lady, she is also disqualified from truma? Amakra, because the pasuk says a cholot is unique. Lo yichal zarei ba'amot. The Torah says that a a person, a Kayan, let's say, is not allowed to have an illegal marriage. And if they do, they make their children a chalol. What does it mean? Ma'akazari loy. Just like the, the, the child, the chalol is like the Kayan himself. The Kayan marrying the Grusha disbands his wife for life for eating truma. Mahu paisel. Just like he himself passes his wife from eating truma for the rest of her life. Avzare nami paisel. So also the child. Who the child, the Cholo himself, if he would have relations with a Bas Kohen, right? That Bas Kohen is forever disqualified from eating Truma for the rest of her life. Then the Gemara asks two more questions. The Ema, let us say, Mishas Havaya, Mishas Havaya, from the time of Kedushim. Let's say the illegal marriage is, let's say I told you, Omamzer marrying a Bas Kohen, she's disqualified for the rest of her life from eating Truma. But maybe, I would think that uh, that even just giving Kedushin, even if he didn't sleep with her, th- that already disqualifies. Even if he just gave her a ring, uh, would that disqualify her? Answers the Gemara, no. Because Dumya the Kohen Gadol Ba'amona. It's very similar to a Kohen Gadol that marrying an Amona. A Kohen Gadol cannot marry an Amona, right? But Ma Kohen Gadol Ba'amona, a Kohen Gadol disqualifies the Amona from ever eating Truma is Babia, only if he had relations with her. Of Hainame, all other psulim that disqualify a lady is only Babia, only if they have marriage. Bia, not just Kisia, like uh, just a Kedushin, it has to be a full marriage. The Ema, then let us say, the Pasuk does say Kisia, if Bas Kohen, Kisia Le'ezhar, if she marries somebody, and this usually means giving a ring, but you're trying to tell me that you need Bia also. So maybe you need both. The only time a mamza would disqualify his wife from ever going back to eating truma is only if he had a kedushin and then went to a chop and had bia. But what happens if he just had bia? Maybe that wouldn't disqualify. That's the Gemara's question. Until you have both kedushin and bia, and then you disqualify. But just bia alone would not disqualify. And says Gemara, no. Do me the koingodl ba'almon. It's very similar to a koingodl and almona. Just like a Kayan Gadol disqualifies his wife forever just by having uh, Bia relations with her, any woman that has illegal relations, it's just by having that sleeping, Bia Lechuda already disqualifies her for life. Then the Gemara says like this, there was an opinion that was brought before that said that illegal marriages disqualify the woman on condition. What condition is? Call Shazar Apostle. If they would, if this union is a type of union that would create a bad kid, a puzzle, a kid, then Paisel, then she becomes disqualified. For example, a mom's are marrying a Bas Kohen, they have a, a son or a daughter, that son or daughter is a mom's or a mamzeris. So then that disqualifies her from ever eating truma. The Chol Shein Zare Apostle, if the child is not Puzzle, if the child will be a kosher Jew, Ain Apostle would not disqualify her. So how is that, what, 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 what would be the difference between Ma'ika ben Tana Kamal Rabbi Yossi? What would be the difference between the first Tana and Rabbi Yossi? Because every illegal marriage is presumably produces an offspring that is a bad kid, right? Not true. If, the, if a second generation Mitzri, we know in the Chumash it says that the third generation Mitzri is already a full-fledged Jew. So if a Mitzri converts and marries a Mitzris, and then next generation marries a Mitzris, the third generation Mitzri is already can marry a regular Jewish woman. So let's say a Bas Kohen married a Mitzri Shani. Well, it's an illegal marriage. So according to the Tanakama, she's disqualified. But according to Rabbi Yossi, she's not disqualified. Why? Because the child from that offspring is a Mitzri Shlishi, is a regular Jew. So she wouldn't be disqualified. Ushneim, Rabbi Yossi, in the Tanakama, Loy Lamadu, Elam Kayan Godl Baalmana. They they learned it from Kayan Godl Talmana. Tanakama Sava Ma Kayan Godl Baalmana should be also a Baabeira. A Kayan Godl marrying an Almana. The Bia is with an Abeira. U Poisel, right? At Hai, Nami Poisel. As soon as their relation is an illegal marriage, 
that disqualifies her. Rabbi Yaisi Sava, no. Kid Kain Gadol, you compare it to the illegal marriage of the Kain Gadol. Ma Kain Gadol, Shazari Paisel. When a Kain Gadol marries an Almana, they create a child that is a Paisel also, an, uh, an illegal child, so to speak. And therefore, Af Kol Shazari Paisel Paisel. Anytime you put this marriage can create an illegal child, that uh, disqualifies her. La Puke Mitzri Shani, a second generation Mitzri that marries a Bas Kohen, that marries a Bas Kohen, the Ain Zarai Puzzle, that the child is not Puzzle. The Torah says that a third generation Mitzri could marry a Jew. So if a Mitzri Shani marries a Bas Kohen, that doesn't disqualify her, even though she did an illegal marriage, that doesn't disqualify her from uh, 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 eating truma. Rab Shimon Ben Gamliel, Omer Rab Shimon Ben says, Kol Shat Tanoisi Bita Tanoisi Amanasay. Rab Shimon Ben Gamliel said that if you can marry the daughter, then you can marry the almana. The, again, there's another third opinion over here that's a little bit different than Rab Yosi and 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 Rab Shimon Ben Gamliel. The Gemara is going to explain like this: Ma Ika Ben Rab Yosi Rab Shimon Ben Gamliel. So we go like this. Oma Ulo Oma Ulo said, Ger Amoini Omai Ovi Ika Benayu. Let's say. A woman had relations, a Bas Kohen marrying an Amoini or Mayovi, right? This is Rus. Now, a, a man, so that's an illegal marriage because a Jewish woman is not allowed to marry a Mayovi. But if they have a daughter, that daughter is, is, is kosher because the girls of Mayovi are not a problem. It's only the men, the males are. So Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel will hold, Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel will hold that if a Bas Kohen married an Amoini or a Mayovi, that wouldn't disqualify her from truma. That wouldn't ban her for life for truma. But the Tanakama holds yes, and Rabbi Yossi holds yes. They, 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 they both Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shimon Gamliel learned their opinions from Kain Gadol and Almana. Rabbi Yossi saw the Mark Kain Gadol Almana Shazari Pasul Paisel that Kain Gadol and Almana that he has an offspring of a, if a Kain Gadol marries an Amana, their offspring is a problem. So af kol shazari apostle, apostle. Whenever you'll have a child that could be a apostle, then the woman becomes disqualified. There's a potential by an Amoini or Mayavi marrying the Baskoe that they'll have a male. And that male is an illegal male. So that would be a apostle or child. So that would disqualify her. That's why Rabbi Yisrael will hold that if she married an Amoini or a Mayavi, that would disqualify her. But Rabbi Shimon ben Gabriel says, no, my Kohen Gadol Ba'amana, no matter what child they had, a Kohen Gadol marrying an Amana, every child that they had is, is a Cholo. She calls our apostle. Every children that they have from that union, from a Kohen Gadol to an Amana, is a apostle, therefore, Upaiso disqualifies her. Af, call, in, in, uh, in another instance, Shazar calls our apostle. Any child that you will have from such a union, Paiso, that will disqualify her. La Puki, this excludes that if this Bas Kohen would marry an Amoini or Amoinovi, because the Ain calls our apostle, any, not all children that they have from this union is apostle a child. Why? Because if they have a daughter, it's a kosher child. That only a, a male Amoini is also to come into Kalashan, not a female. Mayavi, Vilei Mayavis. A male Mayavi, not a female Mayavis. So since this potential in this union to have a kosher child, According to Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, it would not disqualify her from from uh, from from uh, truma from truma. So let's go back to that brisa again, very quickly. The brisa says, "Gera moini mayovi misri adami kusi." No matter what, all illegal marriages, according to Tanakama, disqualify her from eating truma anymore. Rabbi Yossi says, "Not all. If if the child will be kosher." Uh, then, then, then wouldn't disqualify her. Rab Shimon ben Gamliel says what? That only even if one child of that union would be kosher, it wouldn't disqualify her. New Mishnah. New Mishnah. A man, let's say, let's say a man a Yisrael raped a lady, raped the Bas Kohen. Does that puzzle her? Does she can't eat truma anymore? So let's see, Ketzad. That's what the Mishnah is talking about. Yisrael Shabal Baskoyin. Yisrael raped the Baskoyin, or didn't they? It was out of wedlock. Let's say he just slept with a Baskoyin. So the Mishnah says 
Tocha betruma. She can eat truma because they're not married. The only time a Yisrael uh, t- takes a koyin, a daughter of a koyin, and stops her from eating truma is only if they get married. But that is not considered marriage. And therefore, uh, therefore, it wouldn't. she could go back and eat truma. And not only that, a shaita that marries, a Yisrael shaita that marries a bas koyin, it's not really a marriage. It's a shaita can't make any, uh, an imbecile can't make a marriage. So therefore, she could go back and eat truma. Go to the next page. Ibra, if she became pregnant, then loitaycha betruma, because because then she's pregnant, even though she was never married to the guy, but she became pregnant through that rape, then she can eat truma, because she potentially has a, a Jewish, a Yisrael child in her. Nechtach uber b'me'el, if there was an abortion there, and she's still carrying there, toichel, then she could eat truma, because the, the, the uber died. Hoya koyim, let's the opposite case. Let's say a koyim shabal bas Yisrael. A koyim that raped a Bas Yisrael. Are they married? No. So therefore, like Teichel Betruma, this daughter of Yisrael is not married to the koyim. She was just raped by him. Therefore, like Teichel Betruma, she can't eat Truma. Ibra, but if she got pregnant, like Teichel, she still can't eat Truma because she has no offspring of a koyim from him because she's only pregnant. And the only time she can eat Truma is only if she has an offspring. Yolda, if she actually give birth, Toichal, she can eat truma. Why can she eat truma? Because now she has a, even though her, she doesn't have a husband because it was just a rape, but she has a son that's a kayan. And therefore she can now eat truma on the basis that she has a son that's a kayan. Nimsa, so this is a perfect case. Koiche Shelben, the power of the son is Godel Mishal Ab. The father who just raped this woman is not feeding her truma, doesn't give her the license to eat truma. But the fact that she had a son, that gives her the license to eat truma. That's why the ben is stronger than the father. Now, the Mishnah says like this, Again, we learned, uh, this is the important thing. Memory full. Oh, we learned that, we learned that, um, that as long as you don't have any children from that woman, then the Bas Kohen could go back home and eat, eat. Look at this. A Bas Kohen could go back home and eat truma from her house. Let's say she married Israel, she goes back home. Look at this picture. And then uh, this is the picture of the Mishnah. And it's very simple. A Kohen married a Bas Yisrael, guess what? She's eating truma. They have a son, He's uh, she's eating truma. That son, uh, you know, had an affair with a shifka, with a guy. And this, so therefore, it's a shifka made. So this, the grandson is an evid. Now, what happens? Her husband died and her son died, but she still has a grandson, an evid. Well, an evid is almost an independent entity. It's almost as if there's no relationship between the, the evid and her parents. It's, so therefore, it's almost as if this Bas Yisrael doesn't have any offspring from this original marriage to the Kayin. Therefore, she has to stop eating truma. That's what the mission is saying. How is, that means like this. Bas Yisrael a Kayin, a daughter of Yisrael a Kayin. Bas Kayin Yisrael. The elder men are bad. So the Bas Yisrael was eating truma because she's married to a Kayin. And the Ben had relations with a Shifcha. The older men of Ben, they had a son, Harei Evid. That's the Evid. But now they both died. If the grandmother was a Bas Yisrael Koyen, Loi Toichal Betruma, she cannot continue to eating Truma because she has no offspring anymore, even though she technically has a grandchild, but that's not called her grandchild. It's from uh, Shifcha. And, and therefore, the grandchild is an Evid. She can't continue to eat Truma. And Ubas Koyen Yisrael, if she was originally married to a Yisrael, the grandmother, so now she has no offspring from the Yisrael. She could go back home, Toicha Betruma, she could go back home and eat Truma. Let's do the next case, a Mamzer. Here's the case of a Mamzer. Now, a Mamzer is very different. So basically what we're talking about is what is called your grandchild. What is called your grandchild? Here, it's called your grandchild. Again, a Kohen married a Bas Yisrael, guess what? She can eat Truma. She has a daughter, right? She has a daughter. Now, this daughter married an Evid or had relations with an Evid. The, our Mishnah holds, if you have a relations with a Goy, and this is a terrible thing, but we don't hold like that, that if you have relations with a Goy, the offspring is a Mamzer. Could you imagine that if we pass like that, there any non-from girl 
that had relations with a with a with a goy, and they have an offspring. That's a mamzer. This person can't become a balchuva, even though the mother was a Jew. But the our Mishnah holds that the child is a mamzer. So basically, let's say the kohen died, her husband died, and this daughter died. This one, she has a grandchild, the mamzer. So the Mishnah is teaching you, she has a relations with her grandchild. She's continue. She can continue to eat truma on behalf of her husband. That's what the Mishnah said. Mamza paisel macha kate said bas Yisrael a daughter of Yisrael lekoyin bas koyin Yisrael v'yol dem and a bas v'yol cha bas v'nisus leaver al goy v'yol dem and a ben harayz a mamza hoyse im imoy bas Yisrael lekoyin teicha betruma bas koyin Yisrael loy teicha betruma. Again, this is the case that if there's a grandchild, a mamza. Right, so even though her her daughter died and the kohen died, she can continue to eat truma on the basis that she has a, son, a grandson that's a mamzer. And the other way around, if she was a bas kohen and she was married to Yisrael, the fact is that she has a grandson Yisrael the mamzer, and therefore she can't go back home because she still has an offspring from that original marriage. And therefore, that's the difference between a mamzer and an evid. A mamzer is considered the grandchild. An evid grandchild is not considered to be a grandchild. That's what you have to remember. Now is the final case in the Mishnah. Koyen gadol pa'amim shu paisel keitzad. What's the case of a koyen gadol? Bas Yisrael. Bas koyen. Let's read it. Let's see the picture. Let's see the picture. You'll see what's going on over here. Very simple. A Yisrael married a bas koyen. So she loses her rights from eating truma because she's married to Yisrael. She had a daughter, okay? This daughter married a kohen, okay? So she still has a relationship with Yisrael. She cannot eat truma. Then that relation with the kohen, this they had a grandson. This grandson was lucky enough to become the kohen gadol, okay? Now, now what happens to this grandson? This grandson, because her his father died. The son-in-law died. She could feed her daughter, his mother, Truma, because you know there's a son that's still around, and she could feed her mother Truma. But the grandmother is puzzled from e going back home. The grandmother, the Baskoain, is puzzled from going back home to eat Truma to her original family. Why? Because she has a grandchild from her original marriage to Yisrael, because this is her grandson. So she has a grandson that's preventing her from going back home to eat truma. And if her daughter would die, she she cannot go back home to eat truma, even though she has a grandson that's a kain gadol. So that's what he says over here. That's what the Mishnah says. Kain gadol upon Kate said, bas kohen liyisrael v'yolda hemena bas. Daughter of a kohen to Yisrael. And they have a daughter. V'olcha bas nisa the kohen. And the daughter married a kohen. V'yolda hemena ben. And they have a son, the kohen. And he arrays a royally as kain gadol. That grandson could become the kain gadol. Umishamish abal gabi is bea, but umachel esimai he can cause that his mother, who was married to the kain, could continue to eat truma because he's he's an offspring. Upoisel einimai and he disqualifies his grandmother, who was a daughter of a kain, to go back home to eat truma because she still has a grandson from her original uh, marriage to a yisrael. Zoyse Maris, that's why this grandmother will say, I wish I didn't have my grandson, uh, the Kayan Gadol, because he's disqualifying me from going back and eating Truma. Okay, let's do just one more line. Tanina Rabbanim. We said that a, 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 a shaita that has relations with a woman does not disqualify her from eating. Truma. Let's say a shaita Yisrael, a shaita Yisrael that married a bas kohen, so she's not disqualified from eating truma, because shaita of a cotton shenosu noshim v'meisun is saying peturis menachlitz v'niyavim because a shaita cannot effectuate a marriage. It's only a marriage maybe the rabbanim. So the, their wives are potter from chlitz and yibam. Okay, okay. I think we'll stop over here because this is a, this is just another important point. Uh, from the Mishnah, we'll continue with this point tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Okay. It's all related to the Parsha, so 